This tape is an introduction to the neurologic examination. My name is Doug Gelb. And I'm John Wald. We're from the Department of Neurology at the University of Michigan. The tape's going to be in two parts. The first part is just a neurologic examination from start to finish without any explanation. And the second part is a play-by-play -play between John and myself describing how the examination is done in a kind of how-to fashion. The reason in particular to have that first part without any commentary is that it's very common for physicians and medical students to get the view that the neurologic examination is a very complicated, tedious procedure that uh, nobody can do in any kind of reasonable time frame. And the, the tape, we hope, will make it clear that actually you can do a pretty thorough screening neurologic examination within 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to start by just asking if you could cover the, your left eye with your left hand and look straight at my nose and just point to the finger that I wiggle. Okay. Both. Good. Yes. Good. Both. Mm -hmm. That. Both. That. Both. That. Good. Okay. Switch eyes. Look straight at my nose and do the same. Both. That, that, both, that, both, both. Good. Okay. Now just watch my finger. Move your eyes to follow it, but don't move your head. Good. Now keep looking at my nose, and then move, watch. The, look at the finger. Back to my nose, finger, nose, fist, nose, fist. Okay, keep looking at the finger as it moves in. Good. Uh, now keep looking straight ahead, and I'm going to be shining a light in your eyes. Just ignore it, don't really focus on anything. Open your mouth wide. Say ah. Ah. Good. Stick your tongue straight out. Move it side to side. Okay. Open your mouth wide. Don't let me close it. And now close it tight. Don't let me open it. Move your jaw side to side. Good. Make a big smile. Okay. Now close your eyes as tight as you can. Open them wide. Okay. Does it feel the same when I touch you here and here? Same. Here and here. The same. Here and here. Same. Do you hear that? Yes. And that? No. Yes. Good. Put your arms straight out in front of you like that. Spread the fingers wide. Close your eyes. Keep your eyes closed and touch the tip of your nose with the tip of your right index finger. OK, now your left. Good. Open your eyes. And I'm going to test some muscles. Shrug your shoulders up like that. And keep them up. Don't let me push down. Good. Relax. Turn your head that way. Don't let me pull back. And the other way. Same thing. Good. Put your arms out like that. Don't let me push down. Go like this. Don't let me pull out. Put your hands like that. Don't let me lift up. Same here. Push down hard. Good. Put your arms out like that. Don't let me push down. Go like this. Don't let me push the fingers down. And spread the fingers wide apart. Don't let me push them together. Go like that. Don't let me pull up. Put your hands like that. Pull the fingers up. Don't let me straighten them. Pull those fingers up. Don't let me straighten them. Good. Relax your hands. I'm going to touch you on the right, the left, or both. Close your eyes. Tell me which I touch. Right, left, left, both. Right, both. Good. And I'm going to take your thumb. I'm going to move it either up or down. Close your eyes. Say which way it goes. Up, up, 
down, down, up. Good. Same thing over here. Down, down, up, down, up, down. I can't tell. Up, down. Good. Feel that vibrating? Yes. And there? Yes. I'm going to take a safety pin, and I'm going to touch you with either the sharp or the dull. Close your eyes and say sharp or dull. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. 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 Same thing on the other hand. Ready? Sharp, sharp, dull, sharp, sharp. And does it feel equally sharp here and here? Yes, it's equal. Here and here? Yes, that's equal. Good. Take your right hand and go like that as fast as you can. And now the left. Good. With the left hand, go like this. Now that hand. OK. Take your finger and touch your nose. Touch my finger. Go back and forth as fast as you can. And now your other hand. Good. OK. Can you cross your right leg over your left? And I'm just going to test your reflexes here. While I do this, I'm going to test your memory. So I'm going to tell you three things to remember, and I'll test you in a few minutes. A cauliflower, a bicycle, and happiness. So cauliflower, bicycle, and happiness. Good. Say those over and over to yourself and try and memorize them, because I'll be distracting you. Cauliflower, bicycle, and happiness. OK, I'll be testing in a few minutes testing you in a few minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to be asking you questions. Some of these will be easy, and don't be offended that they're too easy. Some may be hard, and don't get upset if they're too hard. First, can you just tell me what the date is today? February 16th, 1996. And where are we right now? We're at the University of Michigan, Department of Neurology. And what's your full name? John Joseph Wald. Can you tell me who's the president? Bill Clinton. And who was president before him? George Bush. And before him? Ronald Reagan. Before him? Jimmy Carter. And before him? Gerald Ford. And before him? Johnson, maybe. Oh, Nixon. Okay. And then Johnson. Good. And before him? Kennedy. And before him? Truman. <laughs> uh, good. Eisenhower. OK. Cross your legs the other way. Can you just repeat after me, we all went over there together. We all went over there together. No ifs, ands, or buts. No ifs, ands, or buts. Each football game brought the quarterback closer to the championship. Each football game brought the quarterback closer to the championship. Good. You can relax your legs. Uh, repeat these numbers back to me. Eight, three, five, Four, one, seven, nine, six. Eight, three, five, four, one, seven, nine, six. Good. I'm just going to give you a math problem. Suppose you went to the store to buy six pieces of candy, and they cost 12 cents each. How much change would you get from a dollar? 28 cents. Good. What is 100 minus 13 divided by 3? 29. Good. Um, these will seem like silly questions, but if a lion was killed by a tiger, which one is still alive? The tiger is still alive. Is my aunt's uncle a man or a woman? He's a man. And what do an, oops, sorry. 
What do an apple and an orange have in common? They are fruits. What do a basketball and a grapefruit have in common? They're round or spheres. What do a tent and a cabin have in common? They're shelter. What do a painting and a symphony have in common? They're works of art. What's the difference between a river and a lake? The flow and the size. What's the difference between a baby and a midget? Their maturity. Good. What were those things okay. I asked you to remember? And what were those three things I asked you to remember? Um, a bicycle, cauliflower, and happiness. Good. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you to pull your knee up towards your nose. And don't let me push down. Good. And push down hard. Don't let me lift up. Okay, pull this knee up towards your nose. Don't let me push down. Push down hard. Don't let me lift up. Good. Now I'm going to lift your leg for you. Pull your foot back under the chair. So bend your knee. Don't let me straighten it. Okay, now straighten it all the way out. Good. Same thing here. Pull back. And now push out. Okay. Put your feet like that. Pull the toes back towards your head. Don't let me push down. Push down hard. And here. OK. And relax. All right, now I'm going to touch you on the right, left, or both again. Close your eyes. Tell me which I touch. Right, left, right, both, left. Good. Does it feel the same here and here? Same. Here and here? They're the same. All right. Now I'm going to take your big toe, and I'm going to move it either down or up. Keep your eyes closed. Say which way it moves. Down, down, up, down, down. Good. Same thing on the other side. Down, up, up, down, down, up. Good. And now, do you feel that vibrating? Yes. And there? It's not vibrating. Now? Yes. Good. And again, I'm going to take a safety pin and touch you with either the sharp or dull. Just tell me which. Sharp, dull, sharp, sharp, dull, sharp, sharp. Is it equally sharp there and there? Equal. There and there? Equal. Good. OK, I'm just going to hold your leg for you. And just let yourself relax as much as you can. I'm going to scratch the bottom of your foot. It will be a little uncomfortable. Do that once more. OK, and now the other foot. OK, while I hold this one here, can you take the other heel Put it on your knee and run it straight down the front of your shin. Good. And now let's switch legs. Do the same thing. Good. OK. Just let your leg be loose here. I'm just going to move it for you. Let it be as relaxed as you can. Same thing with your hands. With your left hand, can you just uh, tap your leg as fast as you can? Good. OK. And now with your right hand, tap your leg. Good. Cover your left eye one more time. And just read the lowest line on this card that you can read. You can hold it. Two, six, four, five, nine, seven. Good. And the other one. 
the other eye. Three, two, six, eight, four, five. All right, and just look straight ahead. I'm going to be looking in the back of your eyes. Just try and pick a spot on the wall there and keep looking at it as if my head weren't in the way. Okay. And now I'm just going to write some numbers on your fingertip here. Close your eyes and tell me what number I write. Three. Good. One. Mm -hmm. Four. Good. Same thing over here. Eight. Good. One. Good. And close your eyes again. Tell me what I put in your hand here. It's a coin. Might be a dime or a penny. Good. And over here? It's a coin, it's a nickel. Good. Okay, the last thing is to watch you walk. Can I have you just stand up over here? And we're in tight quarters, so I'll just have you walk a short distance. Uh, stand here, why don't you? And turn around. Walk on your heels with your toes up in the air. And now walk on your tiptoes. And walk with the heels touching the toes like that. Good. Okay, you can have a seat. Very good. The examination you just saw was actually a little bit more complete than I usually do in the routine office examination. And even so, I think it should be clear that it only took about 10 or 15 minutes and it's something that is realistic to expect to do on every single patient. Well, the other point, Doug, is that some of the areas could be expanded upon greatly if there was an abnormality that you wanted to better define or search out for subtle abnormalities. So everything we covered could be expanded greatly if the need arose. Right. I think a lot depends on what the patient's complaints are and whether you're finding something abnormal as you do the screening exam. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we really ought to point out is that the order in which I conducted that examination is arbitrary. I obviously chose to do things in such a way that I did almost all my testing of the upper extremities first before proceeding to the lower extremities. Right, and I tend to use a more classical approach where I would do the complete mental status examination when I did it, followed by a cranial nerve exam, motor exam, reflex exam, and sensory exam. So that being said, I think that the next step is just to go through each part of the examination and give more detail about how we do it, and it will be up to the viewer to decide if there's a particular part that you feel the need to listen to the specifics or whether you want to skip to the next part. The first thing that we're going to discuss is the cranial nerves and uh, the first cranial nerve that is routinely tested is number two, the optic nerve which is responsible for vision. As you saw in the tape, when I test visual fields I test each eye separately. That's very important because if you happen to have a lesion that affects one part of the visual field of one eye but spares the corresponding part of the other eye, then the good eye can compensate for the abnormal one. And if you're testing both eyes together, you won't pick up a deficit at all. Um, having said that, I cover the one eye. I ask the patient to cover the eye that corresponds so that I have a control for what I should expect the patient to be seeing. And then I put stimuli in the various regions of the periphery of the field. I can also, while doing that, check to be sure that the patient's always looking at my nose. And so I'm testing the part of the field that I think I am. Uh, other people do slight variations. I think you do it a little differently. Right, Doug. I do everything you do with the exception of I don't use moving fingers, I use a static finger. So I'll give the patient certain fingers in each of their fields and ask them to count them. It's supposed to be more sensitive to have a patient pick up 
non-moving images. The other part of the visual, the optic nerve testing that was on the examination was the visual acuity, which is just a matter of either using a chart that's posted in the examination room or a near card like I used, holding it about 12 inches from the patient's eye, again testing one eye at a time and asking the patient to read the, the lowest line, the smallest print that they can read. It's often useful if the person doesn't automatically pick a low line to actually force them to go another line below what they thought was lowest uh, and to push them a little bit. Um, the third thing on optic nerve testing is to actually inspect the optic fundi using the fundoscope and that's something that really is a matter of practice. The next part of the cranial nerve examination is cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6 which are responsible for eye movements. And there, the most important thing is just to test the movements in the horizontal plane and to test the movements in the vertical plane in the midline. In addition, the cranial nerve four is best tested by testing each eye as it moves down and in. And so there's a kind of a crisscross there. The, um, the movement should be smooth, and what you're looking for is to see that the patient's eyes move smoothly I usually hold the finger in a position near the end of each movement to check for nystagmus, which is a quick jerking movement with a slow return, and then it's a repetitive series of jerks. Uh, in addition to that, you can test to see if the eyes saccade quickly to a target in each direction and whether they do so accurately. The other thing about the cranial nerves, in particular the eye movements, that is important to understand is that there's many, many more tests that can be used to define the abnormalities or to bring out subtle or latent abnormalities. Uh, the next cranial nerve is the fifth, the trigeminal nerve, which is sensation from the face. And as you saw, that I usually test just by a very light touch on each side in the forehead, the cheek, and the chin area. Uh, in addition, there's some muscles that are supplied by the trigeminal nerve, which are the muscles of chewing. And those I usually test just by asking the person to open the jaw and close the jaw against resistance, move the jaw back and forth. The other aspect of the fifth cranial nerve that is easy to test and important to test would be the jaw jerk. This can be tested by having the patient open their mouth gently, supporting the jaw, and then giving a tap with your reflex hammer to the mandible and watching for closure of the spaces between the teeth. This would be another place where a somewhat unusual reflex can be tested, which is the corneal reflex, where a wisp of cotton is used to stimulate the cornea and you watch for symmetric blinking reflex. That's an example, actually, of a reflex that I test only if something from the patient's history or the examination so far has made me especially concerned that there might be a problem with the fifth cranial nerve because otherwise uh, it's one of the things that patients find most annoying about the examination and I don't routinely do it. The next cranial nerve is the seventh or the facial nerve which is responsible for muscles of facial expression. That I usually test by asking the patient to smile, have them close their eyes tightly and open their eyes and wrinkle their forehead up sometimes it helps to ask them to actually look up towards the ceiling. The um, next cranial nerve is eight, or the auditory nerve, and that can be tested with all kinds of sophisticated testing, but to be honest, I actually find that most of those tests are very difficult to accomplish in a bedside examination, and so all I usually do with that is to just rub my fingers together by the patient's ear and ask them if they hear it. I will often, when I test one of the two ears, just move my fingers without actually rubbing them just because it's easy for patients to get into a rhythm and start saying yes without paying any attention. The next cranial nerves are the lower cranial nerves, 9 through 12. Those are often harder to test because they generally innervate structures that are less accessible to inspection or palpation, but uh, the ninth and 10th cranial nerves do innervate the palate, and so my major test for those is to shine a flashlight into the back of the mouth while I ask the patient to 
say, ah, and I watch to see if both sides of the palate rise symmetrically. Um, often it's difficult to get a person to do that the way I'd like, and it's easier for me if I ask them to yawn, and there is nobody who can actually yawn without raising their palate. You test a little bit more on those nerves, I think. Well, what I look for is how the patient articulates while I'm speaking with them, and then to test specifically, I will ask them to repeat pause, taz, and cause after me to test the movement of the lips, the tongue, and the pharynx specifically. Okay, the next cranial nerve is 11, the accessory nerve, which 